Hello everyone, this is Gio. Welcome to TDD and Pizza. Today I want to show you uh, like a test-driven development example using the infamous fees bars algorithm. Uh, the once popular uh, question in coding interviews, can you implement the, the this fees bars algorithm? Uh, the version that we are gonna play with is um, a bit uh, streamlined and uh, simply says that uh, if uh, please write a function that uh, takes a integer value and returns a string if the integer is divisible by three it should return fizz if the integer is divisible by five it should return buzz if it is divisible by three and five it should return fizz buzz and finally if it is not divisible by either three or five you just simply print the string value of the, the, the integer, all right? Now, how do we use test-driven development to implement this FizzBuzz version? Well, let's start with a, a scaffold test class. I have, a, I have a snippet for it. Uh, I'll call it with XCT, and it just prints out the, the scaffold. I don't need the, the testable import. You can just write... Buzz and get rid of the, the the test function. Okay, so the when using test driven development, we want to start with the so called test list. We don't just start writing code. We take a moment uh, to think about the different tests we might want to write to help us verify the behavior that we need to implement. In this case, the, um, the test list is kind of mapped out already by the specification of what uh, FizzBuzz does. And that is actually often the case. If you read and understand and play around with the way that your uh, spec, the spec for the behavior that you need to implement is, is written, you can extrapolate a list of tests uh, from there straight away. In our case, um, I'm just gonna write a few comment headers for the test that we want. We're going to want something that says like uh, input three output fees then if input is um, five Xcode Vim mode in this is Xcode 13 beta 4 still still needs some work so I find myself uh, writing stuff that I think is going to work in Vim but uh, doesn't actually work in Xcode and that can be a bit uh, frustrating or embarrassing if you're trying to record a YouTube video. Anyway, moving on. If the input is 5 we want to uh, print pass then All right, so these are just four tests that we can write to help us flesh out uh, the, the FizzBuzz implementation. Let's get uh, started with them. Um, so which one do we start with? Well, there's uh, different options, but the one that I recommend is to start uh, with the test uh, that you are most confident you can get to, to work, because that gives you the chance to uh, implement all the scaffolding that you need for your for your function without the overhead of like having to think about the behavior so i think a an easy test to start would be just just this first one here and if the input is divisible by three let's just return fees and uh, as i'll show you soon we don't even need to implement the logic we can just uh, return fees straight away I have my my test function. What uh, what do we do in that? Well, we want an assertion that says that um, if uh, the return value of our FizzBus function with an input that is visible by three should return fees. How does this uh, FizzBus function look like? Well, let's let's take a, have a crack at, at writing it. Fizz buzz. Okay, have it here, 
and uh, I just this as little amount of code as possible to get it to compile just return an empty string. Usually this version doesn't have to work, it just has to compile. And then we can put it into the test and see what the test tells us. All right, we have the test that says, I expect that fizz bars given three should return fizz. If we run this test, what is gonna happen? Now it's very important to always set yourself the expectation, like have a guess at what the tests are going to do, so that if they don't do what they expect them to do, you can take a step back and try to understand what you're missing of how the system that you're working with that you built works. Uh, in this case, I expect the test to fail because the, the, the our FizzBuzz implementation it just, returns an empty, just returns an empty string. Let's have a look. and they failed, okay, this is uh, as expected. How can we make them pass? Well, the simplest thing that we can do is to return fizz in here. Now I'm running the test and I expect them to pass. Excellent. The next step is either to add, add uh, some logic, some real logic, like uh, let's check if the number is divisible by three, or we can move on with the next test and uh, add the logic based on the failure that we get from there. Um, I prefer the second option. So let's move on to the next test. So in this case, fees of five should return buzz. If we run the test, what is gonna happen? Well, the tests are gonna fail because we have them, we have the return value coded at fees. Cool, so now it is the time to implement uh, some logic to make the test pass. Okay, so what can what can we do? Well, let's implement uh, this um, check for the, the what the number is divisible by, and we can do that this way. All right, notice that um, I didn't um, implement a check for the whether it's divisible by five because with the test that we have right now, this code sh should be enough. And um, I expect it to be enough. I'm gonna run the test now and we'll see if I'm right. All right, the test passed. Whew. Happy days. Um, once again, w what's the next step that we can take? We can add some logic to make the, the implementation correct, or move on to the, the next test and see if that test uh, gives us another chance to further up our implementation. And uh, once again, I, I would take that option there. Okay, here's the new test. Uh, FizzBuzz with 15 as input should, uh, should return FizzBuzz. Is this test gonna pass if we run it? Uh, I would say no, because again, we don't have a check for the double, the, whether it's divisible for both of them. And so I expect it to just return a pass because that is the fallback value that we have in the current implementation. Let me make the font a bit uh, smaller so we can fit all of it in the screen. Okay, um, yeah, so this um, failed. Uh, oh look, I was wrong. This is perfect because it's a clear example of, of um, what I was saying. Make a guess of what the tests uh, are going to do so that if it uh, turns out that your guess is wrong, you can learn something about the system. I was expecting them to fail returning buzz because that's the fallback value, but uh, I forgot that 15 is divisible by both 3 and 5, so the code runs into the is divisible by 3 code path and returns fields, which is still not the right value for us, but is different from what I was expected. And here we are, I learned something about uh, this code that I'm writing. So how can we implement this, uh, this check as well? Well, uh, um, we can do it uh, by mimicking the, the logic that we have already. Okay. Some of you might be saying, hey, Gio, like uh, this code that you're writing is not very good. That is not the point of this step of the test-driven development. 
we are in the red state, we have a test that doesn't pass, and our mission is to make the test pass. Uh, it doesn't really matter how we, we get the test uh, to the green state to pass, it just matters that, that we make it pass. Once we have our test passing, we can um, take a step back and move uh, from the thinking about how to make the test pass to thinking about how to make the code that that we just wrote good code, all right? So the two different problems, and uh, this is one of the things that I like about test-driven development, it gives us a chance to operate in two different modes, and uh, I like to have small problems to solve rather than try to make the code work and write it beautiful at the same time. So now I expect the test to pass because I updated it to check for whether it's divisible by three and five at, at the beginning. And all three tests pass, which is which is great. Okay, we got one last test uh, left to write, uh, and uh, this is the final behavior case of of the fizz bars. If it's not divisible by three or five, just return the the value itself. Okay, a test a input value that is neither that is divisible neither by three nor five returns the input the the given input as a string. Is this test going to pass? No, because once again, we uh, don't have the complete logic, uh, so I expect it to return buzz. Because one is not divisible by three and five or three, and um, my expectation was right. How can we make it pass? Well, it's time to implement the, the last bit of the logic. So in here we can add um, a check for whether it's divisible for five and then a final else if none of them work. Okay, with this final implementation, I expect the test to pass. Let's check it out. All right, all the tests passed. Our FizzBuzz implementation is complete. Now, admittedly, this code is not the best code that I could have written, but it does the job. All the tests are passing. If I were, if I was in a rush to to ship a fix, for example, this would be a good place to stop. The code is not great, but the test pass, and um, I can commit and and ship, and then come back later uh, with a with a fresh set of I and make the code good. How can, we can, how can we improve this code? Well, I have a few ideas. For example, we can remove this horrible sequence of ifs uh, with, with a switch. Okay, uh, here's my switch implementation. I'm not sure why this false is colored pink while this one is purple. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna blame it to an Xcode 13 beta quirk. Anyway, um, I like the switch implementation because it um, it looks clearer and also we can uh, we can shift it around so that it looks like the, the natural language exp explanation. So see here if um, look, I implemented it the wrong way around. Actually, let's look at that. Um, I implemented, th this is this should be the natural language implementation. So if it's divisible by three, then fees, buzz, fees, buzz, and, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I just noticed that I did it the wrong way around. And uh, this is actually a great occasion to show that the tests are gonna tell me that uh, I made a mistake. Yep, the, um, the test uh, for divisible by three and divisible by five fail because I in inverted the logic. So let's just fit up, fix it up real quick. Okay, now I expect the test to pass. Excellent, this refactored implementation works correctly. If uh, um, we or to you know we can keep playing with the with the code implementation for example let's uh, see how it looks like uh, if i make it super concise i expect it has to pass again all good um okay i i actually prefer the previous implementation because i find it a bit hard to r understand what that uh, operation in the in the switch is so i'm just gonna undo my, my changes 
go back to, to the original state, run the test again to make sure that, that, that we're good. And uh, see the test, the, the tests are passing and uh, my code works. One last um, thing to show you is, well, this is a fizz buzz, it's a relatively simple piece of code to, to, to write. Uh, I, I'm not too confident that uh, my implementation is, is um, bulletproof. I can think of an implementation of this code that uh, would make the test pass, but wouldn't be a correct fizz buzz. Um, let me, let me show, you, show you what I mean. This is a perverse implementation of FizzBuzz because um, it, it is incorrect, but it will make this unit test pass. Yeah, see, the tests are passing. What am I trying to tell you here? That uh, the unit tests are, are they're not giving enough coverage um, because some people could come up with perverse implementation. No, not really. I just want to give you a tool to improve your confidence um, when you have code that, that like uh, you wrote the test, but you feel like, ah, I feel like the, the input space is a bit too, too variable. How can I make my test, um, um, how can I improve the, the coverage that I have? Well, you can use it with this technique called uh, triangulation. And it simply says, well, add more um, examples to your test. So, um, Now you see I added more, more examples and uh, this uh, gives more tests and uh, improves the, the coverage on, on the implementation. If I were to run the test again, now this perverse implementation wouldn't, wouldn't work. Or rather, the perverse implementation does work, but the test uh, correctly uncovers it for, for what it is, uh, something that is not correct. So let's revert it to the way it's supposed to, the way a FizzBuzz is supposed to be implemented. Okay, we are back to the original implementation and uh, now if I run a test, um, they are gonna pass, if I actually correct them here. Okay, let's see. And there we are, the test uh, passed, and um, this is a good example of the triangulation techniques technique when uh, you have um, a piece of code that you're testing and uh, you are a bit, you want more confidence, add more examples, and uh, they're gonna triangulate the fact that your implementation is correct. Just to recap, what did we do in this video? We took a stab at implementing uh, FizzBuzz using test driven development. We started from a test list, an enumeration of the different tests that we might want to write to drive the behavior. Then we started from one that uh, gave us a chance to write all the scaffolding for, for, for the code that we had to write and um, that we could make pass real fast and then moved through the test, adding just enough code to make them pass while keeping the other one green until eventually we had enough tests that forced us to implement a correct implementation. At that point, uh, we took a step back and we refactored it into something that uh, at least I like more than the original version. And finally, we added more example using the triangulation technique to increase our confidence on the, on the test coverage. For this method. This is it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoy this explanation, you might like uh, the rest uh, of my book, Test Driven Development in Swift. You can find it at tddinswift.com. If you want to get in touch with me, head over to Twitter and uh, find me at mokagio. It's written up there. Or just leave a comment below. Finally, if you're still with me uh, listening, these are the first videos that I'm putting out. I'm just um, experimenting and trying to you know build my confidence with the medium if you have any feedback please please uh, i'm all here how can i improve the audio the video the, the 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 coding is there anything that you would like to learn about testing let me know again leave a comment below or get in touch at twitter at uh, mokajio thank you bye bye see you next time ciao